Hey everybody, Mo Hashem here again with Flat Fee Landlord, DC Metro, and I want to take a quick minute in this video to discuss the top six mistakes that I see real estate investors and landlords make uh, when they rent out their investment properties or their homes. So let's jump right into it. Uh, number one. The landlord or the real estate investor doesn't run the numbers properly when they're purchasing the property. Uh, so if you're a real estate investor and you are purchasing this property for investment purposes, you really got to make sure you do a lot of due diligence and run the numbers to make sure that this is going to be a profitable endeavor for you. Okay, There are plenty of ways for you to make money in real estate, uh, especially when you're investing in it. Uh, Two biggest things I always uh, say to look into is going to be real estate appreciation and cash flow. As a real estate investor, you gotta make sure those two things really add up and fit the um, type of real estate investing you want to do. Um, obviously, appreciation, you're gonna wanna look at areas where people want to live, uh, which is gonna allow the value of the property to rise over time. Uh, just in terms of equity, it's going to give you equity uh, built in over time as the property appreciates and also cash flow. You also want to make sure that you're in the positive each month after your tenant pays the rent and you deduct any of your uh, expenses for renting out the property as well as the mortgage note that you may have on that property. Second one, uh, a lot of the people that reach out to us to manage their property never purchased that property in the first place as a true investment property. So they bought that home to live in it and then eventually something happened where they had to move out, job transfer, whatever it may be. So now they're in a situation where they have to leave the property and do something with that property. So they have basically two options, rent it out or sell it. Again, a lot of times people just don't want to deal with tenants or you know dealing with the phone calls, repairing things, think it turns into a money pit and you don't do enough research to see what market rents can get you versus what you would get if you sold the house. Many times, if you just bought the house and you're about to sell it, depending on what market you're in, you may not be making money after you do, uh, take out the realtor fees and any other fees that are associated with it. Uh, you may have to come to the closing table and give a check to get out of that house. Whereas if you rent it out and your rent is more or close to what you pay monthly, uh, you may be able to get by for a few months or you make some money each month uh, for a couple years until again the property value appreciates and then you can sell the house if you want and make some money off of it as opposed to losing money or just breaking even if you sell it right now. The third mistake I see uh, landlords and investors make is that they are short-sighted and don't look long-term. All right, A lot of times people look at an expense uh, or the property itself as just, hey, I just gotta get through it today, I gotta get through it tomorrow, um, you know, just put whatever in just to get us by, put a Band-Aid on that repair. And a lot of times people don't realize that you gotta look long-term when, when you're in real estate, okay? We're not dealing with stocks, people, this is real estate, and real estate is a long-term asset. Uh, typically, the people that make money in real estate are the ones that treat it as a long-term investment. And as an investor, uh, whether you set out to be an investor or not, when you rent out your property, you technically become an investor and you gotta start having a long-term mentality as opposed to just trying to get by. The fourth mistake I see uh, landlords and investors make, uh, which to me is near and dear to my heart, it's to me what is called what I call the most important part of the whole rental process, is that you don't put enough time, effort, money, energy, resources, and homework into finding a good tenant if you do decide to manage, rent out your property. All right, to me, tenant placement, finding the perfect tenant to rent out your property is single-handedly the most important part of the entire, re entire rental process, okay? I'm a property manager, I'm gonna tell you, finding the right best property manager in the world is not gonna save you if you put in a bad tenant to begin with. So. What I always say is for owners, out of the entire rental process, it's not the day-to-day -day management, it's not you know whatever else you may think it is, always put more time and effort, the most time and effort, into finding that great tenant. The fifth mistake I see landlords and investors make is that they don't run this property that they're renting out as a business. 
they just look at it as maybe a hindrance because again they may never even wanted this property or they're just maybe they are looking long term and they're just trying to keep it as an investment property for uh, to account for the retirement but you got to also treat it as a business that said you got to look at the expenses that come up and also the income that's coming in and you got to make some sound financial decisions when it comes to the day-to-day -day management or owning of that property and you have to make sound judgments on whether you should make that capital improvement today or push it off and uh, deal with it a year from now uh, so that said uh, you got to look at obviously the financial side but then also you also have to look at how you're treating your tenants when they're in the property okay if a tenant has some requests or needs that they have uh, for that property and you as a landlord are very just only focus on the financial side you don't want to put money into it well then that may cause an issue with that tenant and may cause them to move out at the end of that lease which if you continue that cycle you're going to find have to be finding a new tenant almost every year which is going to reduce your costs because now you're finding a tenant each year you're obviously having to do make readies each year uh, turning it over there's vacancy time that you have to account for where income's not coming in and you're still paying that mortgage payment so you need to strike that balance in terms of what is good for the tenant what is good for you what is good for the property treat it as a business and you'll do well all right the sixth and the last uh, biggest mistake I see landlords make and this comes with property management uh, not necessarily the property itself is I have landlords reach out to us uh, quite often saying that they can't get out they want to make the switch over to our management agreement or uh, to you know any other property management company because they're not happy with the current property manager that they hired and they can't because they're locked into a contract that they have to wait out or give a certain amount of notice that said as a property as a homeowner or investor if you are going to outsource the management of your property to a property manager please make sure you read the management agreement, know what you're getting into, know what the property manager's role is, know what your role is as the landlord, and obviously make the sound decision to see what best fits your interests and needs. If you have any other questions uh, about other mistakes and you don't wanna make that mistake, please reach out to us. You can go to our website at flatfeelandlord.com or give us a call at any one of our offices.